The products in this video have been supplied by PC Case Gear, Australia's premier online PC store. A link to their website and Facebook page can be found in the description. So you guys know that I'm a big fan of mice. That's why today I'm so excited to be taking a look at Ducky's secret mouse and their matching Flipper Extra R mouse pad. So let's get into it. Alright, well first things first, let's take a look what we get inside the box. So we'll just open the top here. Actually, it's got a couple more on the side. So, the mass looks like it comes in its own little... I guess plastic protector, very much like the Logitech mice does. So the top will just lift off like that. We've got the mouse. So let's get that out. Thread the cable through here. All right, now in the bottom, let's just sit that aside for a second. So in the bottom, it looks like we've got a couple more or replacement Teflon feet, which would be handy. And Uh, weight that's in there. It's really in there. All right, there we go. So an 11 gram weight, which you can add into the bottom of the mouse, I guess. So we'll set them aside, put the packaging away. Also got the instruction booklet here, which goes through how to set up all the different settings and the mouse itself. So that's all there is to it. There's no driver CD or anything else in there. That's all there is. Let's have a look at the mouse pad. Now I have an unboxed too many mouse pads and I dare say this isn't going to take very long but we'll still give you guys a look it's pretty straightforward it comes in a nice box a solid box and I noticed it's really heavy as well so I'll pull that out and obviously it's just got the mouse pad rolled up there it's pretty heavy and pretty big so let's go ahead and have a bit of a closer look at both these things this is the Ducky Secret Optical Gaming Mouse. Ducky are actually more known for their high quality keyboards and have begun branching out their peripheral range to include mice. The design's actually really basic and reminds me of the old IntelliMouse from back in the day. But Ducky are all about keeping it simple and making things extremely high quality. How you say, less flair, more care. I should trademark that. How to trademark things. Its dimensions are 58mm wide, 124.5mm long and 38mm high. The entire body is made from PBT or polybutylene terephthalate for those of you who need to know, which is basically a very robust plastic known for its toughness and longevity, so you're not likely to see any signs of wear for a very very long time. Without weights it comes to 120 grams, which puts it more on the heavier side as far as mice go, although it has the extra 6 gram weight installed by default, and you have the option to install another 11 grams of weight, but I'll get more to that later. It uses the Pixar PMW 3310 optical sensor, which has a range of 400 to 5000 DPI. All six buttons, including the DPI switcher on the bottom of the mouse, use Japanese Omron switches rated at, well, a hell of a lot of clicks. You're never going to get there. It has RGB lighting on both sides of the mouse and under the scroll wheel, but it's just the single zone, meaning that you can't have individual colors for each side. Underneath we can see the four Teflon feet and the Pixart optical sensor we mentioned before, and the five screws you'll have to remove to access to change the weights. It has rubber, non-braided, 1.8 meter USB 2 cable with stress relief points on both ends of the cable where it joins the mouse and the USB plug. The mouse wheel itself has some nice tactility and it's obvious when you cycle through the notches. Okay, now let me show you how you change the weights in this mouse. What you need to do is you need to flip the mouse over and remove the five screws underneath. Once you have them removed, you can lift the bottom of the mouse and that will actually bring the entire assembly out. Now you've got access to the area where the weights sit. In order to change the weight, you just need to remove those four little chrome screws and those holding plates will come out and you can insert the extra weights. Now that we've taken the top off the mouse, we get a look at the internals, which show the PCB, the LED lighting, and also the switches. And now let's take a look at the software. There isn't any. The Ducky Secret is actually a direct plug and play mouse with no additional software. 
And I know this could be an issue for some people, but I also know that there are others out there who configure the mouse how they want when they first get it, and then they leave it alone. All the settings on this mouse are controlled by button inputs on the mouse itself. The DPI is simply controlled by pressing the DPI button underneath. There are seven settings, 400, 800, 1200, 1600, 2400, 3200 and 5000 DPI. The RGB lighting is set to cycle by default, but can be set by holding down the DPI switch underneath and using the scroll wheel to reach the desired color. Ducky claims 16 million color RGB, but when scrolling through the colors, it looked a lot more like only about 50 variants. The color cycle mode definitely looks to have more smoother transitions. You're also able to change the polling rate, angle snapping and surface tuning by pressing the DPI switch underneath and a few of the other mouse buttons. You'll see different stages reflected on the DPI LEDs, and each variable has a different color, so you know exactly what you're adjusting. For example, polling rate is green, angle snapping is yellow, surface tuning is blue, but I'm not gonna bore you with the process because honestly, you'll just wanna leave those three settings at their default values. This is the Ducky Flipper Extra R mouse pad. It's 800 millimeters wide, 350 millimeters tall, and three millimeters thick. It has a waterproof top surface, but does seem to show marks very easily. They wipe away, but it can look more used than it really is unless you keep it clean. The pad is made from cloth with red stitched edges, which is a welcome improvement from the last generation of flipper pads where the edging would fray quite badly over time. It has a heavy rubber base offering plenty of grip even under its own weight, so when you put your keyboard and mouse on there, it's not moving anywhere. I will say that as a rule of thumb, I prefer the feel and glide of hard pads. I like that they are easy to keep clean and have very little friction. I feel that sometimes the cloth pads have way too much drag, but this one feels nice. It's a very, very tight micro texture, and I think it does a good job of splitting the difference between comfort of a soft pad with the glide of a hard pad. Overall, I think it's a nice looking mouse pad, which has a very clean design and feels very nice. And yeah, the red stitching isn't going to match some people's setups, but those that it does, I think that it'll look great and give a nice red bordered aesthetic to your keyboard and mouse area. So there you go guys, what do you think? I know that straight off the bat, it's not gonna be a mouse that suits everyone, mostly because of the way it looks and the lack of software. But I used it for about six hours combined, doing a bit of web surfing, doing some gaming, and also editing this video. And I found it to be a pretty good mouse overall. Now there were a few things that I didn't quite like about the mouse. And the first thing being the way the interchangeable weight system works. I find that to be very awkward, I mean, you have to remove a total of nine screws to get to the area that you need to get to, to either add or remove weights. Now, one of the issues I had with that was one of the little chrome screws that holds the retainer plate in actually stripped. Now, it only had just enough meat left on it to get the weight in and screwed back in, but basically that's in there for good now and there's not much I can do about it. It's basically a semi-permanent modification to the mouse, and I'm not sure that I'm a big fan of that, especially when there's other more simple weight adjustment methods on other mice, for example, the G502 with the magnetic door that you can just uh, take off and, and put the weights in and snap back on, or even the G500 from way back that had the spring-loaded cartridge that popped out. That was even better. The other thing that I didn't like too much is the fact that the thumb buttons have way too much travel. I don't like the thumb buttons to be spongy like that. I like them to be sharp and precise. Now, if anyone out there has a Steel Series Sensei Raw, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Those thumb buttons have absolutely no travel at all and they actuate as soon as you touch them. That's the way that I think thumb buttons should be. They should be sharp and precise and it shouldn't require hardly any movement of your hand while you're playing a game to actually activate those buttons. It should be a very natural motion and there should be almost no travel in the thumb buttons. It's also probably only going to suit people with larger hands. It's quite a bulky mouse and it has a fair bit of size to it so I think people with smaller hands are probably going to struggle a little bit for comfort on it. But apart from those couple of issues, overall it's a good mouse. It's not going to become my daily driver, I'm going to keep my G900. But if you're a fan of ducky gear and you've already got a keyboard, it would look good and it would match nicely. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm getting mighty close to the magic 1000 subscriber mark, which I'm really excited about. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and press the little bell to get notified of my new videos when they come out. And also stay tuned because next week's video will likely be me changing my test bed case already. I know I only built it a couple of weeks back, but I've managed to pick up a Praxis wet bench, so that should suit it a lot better. Hey, the channel's not called Upgrade Addiction for nothing, so stick around for that one, and I'll see you there.